In 1944, the Second World War is coming to an end. Finland and the Soviet Union have signed the Moscow Armistice which decrees that Finland must disarm the Nazis and drive them out of Lapland. The Nazis adopt a scorched earth tactic and destroy all roads, bridges, villages, and towns in their path. Deep in the wilderness of Lapland, former Finnish commando Korpi has decided to leave the war behind him. With his loyal dog by his side and a strong horse, Korpi keeps panning for gold at the river, not giving up until he gets just a tiny speck of gold that indicates he is on the right track. Now he has confirmation, Korpi begins digging holes all over the area while ignoring all the planes that fly above him, going to a war he doesn't want anything to do with. After many days of digging pointless holes, he finally finds a proper gold deposit and cries with happiness. He breaks the huge deposit into a hefty amount of nuggets and hides them in his tent, staying up all night to make sure nobody robs him. The next morning, Korpi puts all the gold in a bag and leaves on his horse, the dog following him closely. A few hours later, Kolpai finds a group of Nazi soldiers led by General Bruno. They have a dangerous tank with them and a truck full of kidnapped women who Soldier Wolf keeps taking advantage of. Korpi just keeps on riding, exchanging a glance with Bruno but otherwise ignoring them all. Wolf wants to shoot him, but Bruno stops him, saying the man is riding to his death anyway. As Korpi continues to ride down the road, he begins encountering all the bodies the Nazis left behind, but he isn't disturbed. Eventually he comes across a truck with four more soldiers, who order him to get off the horse. They inspect the bags and find the gold, thinking they can keep it, so Korpi begins thinking ahead and tells his dog to run away. One of the soldiers tries to shoot the dog, but thankfully the poor animal moves out of the way pretty quickly. Next the soldier calls Korpi grandpa and tries to shoot him too, but Korpi takes his knife and with a quick movement stabs him in the head for an instant kill. The other soldiers try to fight him for revenge, but Korpi moves fast and fights them hand to hand, stabbing them with his knife and using the bodies as shields when someone tries to shoot him. He beats one soldier up with a helmet, and when the last one tries to get him from behind, Korpi twists his arm and kills him with his own gun. Bruno and the others hear the shots and come back to check, only to find the massacre on the ground and Korpi gone. When Bruno checks one of the bodies, he finds a gold nugget the soldier had hidden in his pocket and decides they should go after Korpi. A few moments later, the Nazis find Korpi on the road and the tank begins shooting at him. Korpi makes his horse gain speed and successfully dodges all the shots, only to accidentally enter a minefield. Bruno orders his men to stop the fire and waits until Korpi steps on a mine, laughing because he thinks he got an easy win. However the horse got most of the explosion, so Korpi is wounded but still alive. He wakes up with a dizzy head and says goodbye to his horse before getting ready to counterattack. The Nazis are coming closer, so first Korpi picks up the gold that fell out of the bag. Seeing this, Bruno makes his vehicle stop and waits for Korpi to be done so they don't have to risk their lives picking the gold themselves. Once Korpi is finished, Bruno orders his soldiers to shoot, but Korpi is ready, with the gold he also picked up a rock, which he throws at a mine to make it explode. The resulting smoke provides good cover, and when the Nazis open fire, Korpi uses his panning plate as a shield. After a few minutes of indiscriminate fire, Bruno sends out a young soldier to check on Korpi, but he's hit in the face with a mine and the explosion kills him. Next Bruno sends two soldiers to go down the sides of the road, but they both quickly step on mines. When the wind clears the smoke, they discover Korpi is gone. Wanting to go after him, Bruno orders for two women to walk ahead as a safety check, so Wolf chooses the most scared ones. This causes Aino to volunteer in their place. Meanwhile Bruno checks the area and finds Korpi's dog tag. Moments later, the group keeps on advancing with the two women tied up in front of the vehicles. Bruno uses the radio on the tank to ask for information about Korpi and gets some shocking news, their higher-ups tell them they should quit chasing him and that they are lucky not to be already dead. It turns out Korpi was the most feared commando in Finnish history, and nobody wants to mess with him. He fought in the Winter War and lost his home and his family to the Russians, so he became a ruthless vengeful soldier who took orders from no one. The Finnish gave up trying to discipline or control him, they just sent him out alone into the wilderness to hunt Russian patrols. He became a one-man death squad and reports say he has over 300 Russian kills. They call him Kache, which means the immortal. The story doesn't scare Bruno, who wants to keep looking for Korpi anyway because he wants the gold to buy his way out of punishment, since obviously the Nazis are losing the war. Meanwhile Korpi keeps going until he finds a burnt truck with a body inside. Using it for cover, he lies down behind it and proceeds to take care of his wounds, removing any bullets with his knife and covering the holes with dirt. Suddenly his dog shows up but the little guy is still obedient and watches Korpi from afar. Eventually Korpi falls asleep, only to wake up a few hours later when he hears some noise. The Nazis are here, and they've acquired dogs to track Korpi's scent. Korpi immediately hides under the burnt truck and watches the Nazis passing by, noticing the dogs are onto him. He waits until the last truck drives by and rolls under it, immediately hanging onto it so he's taken along. Then he punctures the fuel tank, and now the falling gas gets in the way of the dogs' noses, making it impossible to track his scent anymore. The soldiers stop to make a new plan, so Korpi tries to run away. Unfortunately the dogs immediately see him and bark to reveal his presence. 
a soldier manages to shoot Corpy in the leg, but he keeps going, so Bruno sends the dogs after him. Corpy doesn't hesitate to light up a match to get a fire going on his gas-covered clothes, scaring the dogs away. The soldiers come after him next, so Corpy jumps into a lake. Bruno makes his men wait for Corpy to come out to breathe, which takes a long while because he has excellent lungs. When Corpy's head finally peeks out of the water, the soldiers immediately shoot, and the blood that appears on the water makes them assume they got him. Three soldiers get on a boat and reach the middle of the lake, intending to find the gold. However as soon as a soldier jumps into the water, Corpy surprises him from behind and kills him with his knife. When only blood appears on the surface, Bruno sends the second soldier underwater, but again only blood resurfaces. The third soldier should go next, but he is terrified and starts going away in the boat. Since this is count as betrayal, Wolf shoots him. This gives Corpy the chance to steal the body and uses it as cover as he runs away, so the soldiers open fire for nothing. At that moment, Corpy's dog shows up and cries because it can't cross the water to follow its master, but Bruno sees his next plan. After hours of walking, Corpy finally makes it to the closest town, but he's devastated to discover it's burning down against the night sky. Too tired to keep going, he decides to rest inside a destroyed gas station and tries to sleep while dealing with the pain from his leg, which makes him have visions of the day he lost his family. Unfortunately when he manages to fall asleep, he immediately is woken up by some barking. Corpy comes out to reunite with his dog, only to discover there is a lit dynamite stick attached to his collar. He immediately takes it away and throws it, but it explodes so close that Corpy is still knocked down to the ground. Then he is found by Bruno, Wolf, and Schutze, who brings some rope to tie him to a sign. Corpy never says a word, and out of respect for such a great opponent, Schutze takes off his hate. Bruno and Wolf quickly follow his example. Before they leave with a bag of gold, Bruno mocks him by leaving a nugget in Corpy's pocket for his troubles. Once they are gone, Corpy stays stubborn and steps on a nail on the sign to keep his body up, he also goes as far as pushing his leg wound onto a second nail. It is painful, but it keeps him alive all night long with his dog still waiting next to him. In the morning, a plane lands next to the station, and the shaking it causes makes the sign bend and drop Corpy to the ground. Two pilots come out looking for gas and one of them finds Corpy and the dog, who won't stop barking. The second pilot tells him to shoot them both, but when the man hesitates, Corpy kicks him in the legs and the man falls, dying when he hits his head on some debris. The dog won't stop barking, so the first pilot comes to check on them, giving Corpy the chance to surprise him from behind by knocking him out with a brick. Corpy thinks there's no hope left for him and buries the nugget Bruno left him, but at that moment the second pilot starts wiggling, revealing he's still alive. Realizing the pilot can be useful with the plane, Corpy takes his gold back to make a plan. As the pilot watches with horror, Corpy begins taking out all the bullets and pieces of metal from his wounds, then he cauterizes them with fire and closes them up with wire before cleaning them up with gas. Then he and the pilot go away on the plane, leaving the dog behind. Sometime later, the Nazis must pause their journey when they find a crashed plane blocking the road. Wolf and Schutze approach the plane and find the pilot dead inside, but most surprisingly, Wolf's rope is around his neck. Recognizing this is a trap, Bruno finally understands how terrifying Corpy is and orders his men to leave immediately. Two soldiers travel in the truck with the women, and Ino laughs when she hears them talk about what's going on. She explains they won't be able to do what hundreds of Russians died trying, and that Corpy isn't literally immortal, he just refuses to die. In Finnish they call it Sisu, which refers to a white-knuckled form of courage and unimaginable determination. Corpy never gives up, so Ino considers all the Nazis dead soon. Suddenly one of the soldiers falls dead, and when the other looks outside, he is dragged out of the truck and falls to the ground, where he is run over by the incoming tank. Ino tries to steal the weapon from the dead soldier, but at that moment Corpy enters the truck and grabs the weapon first. When he notices that these are innocent victims, he lets Ino keep it. Next Corpy climbs on top of that truck and kills the driver by stabbing him through the roof, then he pulls the body out so Ino can take over the wheel. Then she drives the truck closer to the tank so Corpy can jump on it. When the people in the tank get suspicious, the girls use the dead body as a puppet to make it look like everything is fine. Afterward Ino drives the vehicle further to move next to another truck carrying most of the soldiers, and the girls immediately open fire to kill them all while Ino shoots the driver. As the truck falls off the road, the people in the tank notice the danger and begin going faster. Corpy is still on top and starts hitting the door with his pickaxe, so the tank suddenly stops to make him fall. Wolf comes out to open fire on him, but Corpy quickly climbs back to the top of the tank and begins fighting Wolf hand to hand. After exchanging a bunch of savage hits, both of them fall on the ground and the tank leaves with just Bruno and Schutze. Corpy hits Wolf a few more times, but before he can kill him, two more soldiers arrive on a bike. As soon as they see Corpy, they recognize the legend and run away. Corpy uses the bike to go after the tank, and for a second Wolf thinks he's safe, but at that moment the armed women show up for their revenge. Eventually the tank stops to meet with a pilot that has a working plane, but he only has room for one person. Bruno doesn't hesitate to kill Schutze and escapes with the pilot in the plane but suddenly Corpy shows up in the bike, immediately opening fire. 
he only manages to break the windows before the plane takes off, so he drives right under it with his pickaxe held high. Bruno looks down and notices the bike is moving, so he assumes they left Corpy behind, but actually the bike is empty. It turns out Corpy is holding onto the plane with the help of his pickaxe. While he tries to change spots he almost falls, but he manages to hold onto a wheel and begins making his way inside by breaking a hole on the floor of the bomb room with his pickaxe. Bruno hears some noises and the pilot blames it on the plane being old, but Bruno is skeptical and comes to check. As soon as Bruno opens the door, Corpy jumps on him and starts a fight. Their punches and kicks are absolutely vicious, and while Corpy is more skilled, he is heavily wounded and that allows Bruno to overpower him. Bruno gets frustrated because Corpy won't give up or scream, and uses a static line to hit him harder as he wonders why Corpy won't die. When he tries for a faster hit with the metal end of the line, Corpy catches it with his hand and connects it to the bomb before releasing it. Bruno falls along the bomb and when they hit the ground, they instantly explode. Corpy wants to rest but suddenly the plane begins shaking and falling, it turns out the pilot had been hit by a stray bullet and has finally died. Desperate to survive, Corpy grabs the gold and straps himself up right before the plane crashes into a swamp, creating another explosion. Meanwhile a Finnish unit gets ready to attack because they see a German tank approaching. However this turns out to be Ino and the girls, who bring Wolf tied to the cannon. Back to the swamp, the water helped Corpy survive the crash and now he's climbing out with the help of his pickaxe, bag of gold still in hand. Some days later, Corpy makes it to the city of Helsinki on the Nazi bike with his dog as company. He enters the bank, where everyone is scared of his presence, and he drops all the nuggets on the front desk, asking for big bills because they won't be as heavy to carry. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.